Welcome back to the Gleason New Homes podcast. We created this podcast to help our customers navigate the journey of buying a new build home and we've covered a range of topics so far. If you've missed any of our previous episodes, you can check them out on Spotify, Apple Music or on YouTube by searching the Gleason Homes podcast. As part of our commitment to sustainability, we're proud to say that all Gleason homes built from June 2023 onwards will feature an air source heat pump. To explain what this means for our customers and how they work, we have two experts joining us today. Adam Butterfield, our design manager, will provide technical insights, while sales and product trainer Daisy Flint will discuss the customer benefits. At Gleason, we pride ourselves on creating sustainable and energy efficient homes, and the inclusion of air source heat pumps is just one way we're working towards this goal. So, if you're considering purchasing a new build home and want to learn more about these benefits, keep listening. Welcome to the podcast, experts. Yeah, that was a bit strong. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you laughing and when you introduce us as experts as well. That's, uh, that's always humbling. So, yeah, Welcome to the podcast. Um, if you would like to introduce yourself, tell us a bit about your roles and what you do at Gleason. Ladies first. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, so my name's Adam. So I'm the uh, group design manager for Gleason, working in technical. Um, I think I've been asked here today because I've spent probably the last couple of years <laughs> of my life looking at heat pumps and specification and design and the ins and outs. Um, so yeah, my my role predominantly focused at sort of drawings, technical, keeping us all compliant, um, keeping quality high uh, and, and making sure that we can build what we need to build to deliver for customers, really. Brilliant. Yeah. I'm Daisy, I am the sales and product trainer uh, at Gleason Homes and I'm responsible for upskilling our sales teams um, in sales techniques but and also product and product knowledge. So Air Source Heat Pumps is a new product uh, to the Gleason product. Product is a big word um, and we'll be featuring a lot I'm guessing. Um, and yeah, so that, that's, that's what I do. Amazing. Well, thanks for joining us and we're going to go into a little bit more about air source heat pumps, what they mean, they're a new kind of, I don't know what the word is, but they're a new, I was going to say taboo, but that's not great to say, is it? <laughs> they're a new technology. <laughs> they're a new technology. Um, but only in the UK, they have actually been around for, for many, 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 many decades. Well, remembered, right? yeah, very good. Yeah. I did read though that in, I think it's Germany, have been having air source heat pumps for ages. Yeah, Germ- Germany have got quite a lot of heat pumps. France as well, they've got a very high percentage. Singapore. Uh, yeah, S- Singapore, Japan, <laughs> very big in Japan, have been for probably about <laughs> 50 years as well. So it's, uh, you know, it's it's about as new technology as a refrigerator. So, you know, Fair that enough. puts it into perspective, really. Yeah. Um, Norway, another shout out. About yeah. 60% of the homes in Norway have got a heat pump. Nice. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's proven technology that can work anywhere. So it's not a new we're technology. Just it's just another yeah. man Yeah, basically. Pretty much, yeah. We're just catching up the rest of the world, basically. We're, we're pretty old-fashioned in the UK, and we like our <laughs> gas boilers churning out ridiculous amounts of heat and then just open the windows, and we're very much that sort of culture. So it yeah. is, we're shifting to a more efficient way of heating homes, which is yeah. just goes hand-in-hand hand with, you know, moving to electric cars and all Definitely. that good stuff that we're doing, so... So I have some fun stats to start off. According to WaterSave, owners of a new build home spend on average 1,707, which is saving 2,510, compared to buyers of an older property who will be facing bills of an average of 4,218, which is probably hard to figure out what I've just said because I can't even comprehend it. But basically, it's the saving equivalent of the average Premier League season ticket, apparently, Um, a lovely holiday or a takeaway coffee every working day of the year. So as well as everything we're already doing to keep our homes energy efficient, we are also introducing as of June 2023, all of our homes will include an air source heat pump. So Adam, can you give our listeners an overview of what exactly an air source heat pump is? And I will stop talking. (laughs) Yep. Okay. Um, Yeah, I'll try and keep it relatively simple. Um, An air source heat pump effectively extracts energy from the air that's very simple terms that's how it works so okay. normally when i try and explain it i'll compare it to something like a panel heater electric panel heater or mm-hmm. a gas boiler because that's what people are familiar with so those two technologies they take energy and they convert it into heat it's pretty straightforward you've got a kilowatt of electricity let's say to a panel heater gives you a kilowatt of like heat out of the unit that heats the heats the home 
Heat pumps work very differently. They don't actually convert energy into heat. They use energy to capture energy from the air and then right. concentrate it to a temperature that we can use in the homes. Okay. So if you, if you see the difference there, so it's not converting energy into heat, it's actually using energy to drive a process of capturing it from mm-hmm. the air. Um, and that's why they're so efficient. So if you look at an electric panel heater, if you put a kilowatt of electricity into that, it'll only give you a kilowatt of heat maximum. It's 100% efficient. You can't do much yeah. better than that, you think. Well, that's where heat pumps are just completely different and completely change the game. So they will take a kilowatt of electricity and through that process of heat extraction from the air, they'll give you 300% efficiency. So they'll okay. give you three kilowatt of heating energy. So that's two so kilowatts. So that's two kilowatts free, free. free that you get from the air outside. Right. And it's there in abundance, you know. Yeah. So it's, uh, it, it's a completely different way of, of heating our homes. And mm-hmm. I just think they're, they're brilliant, to be fair, in the, in the way that they work. Yeah. Um, so what, so. what exactly do they look like then? When a customer comes around, what can they expect to see that would be different um, to just having ordinary radiators? Because from looking yeah. at them, they literally, inside, you can't really tell any difference. Inside, there's not really much difference in terms of you'll still have your traditional radiators that you yep. see in your property. Yeah. Yep. You will always usually find them located typically externally, ground floor window. Um, they will be outside. They're not inside the property. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other factor is they will have a hot water cylinder mm-hmm. tank in the property as well. Yep. So for our buyers, they will probably be sort of familiar with those. They're, we refer to them like as an old airing cupboard, if you remember, with a big yeah. tank in there. I still um, have one of them in my apartment. Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah. And they, they have to come uh, with, with one of those as well. But mm-hmm. inside, there isn't there isn't much change. Yeah. yeah. Um, inside, you've got a bit more room in your kitchen. Yeah. Because there's no boiler taking up space on the wall. That's true. That is yeah. true. And, and like Daisy was saying, in terms of the radiators, they're exactly the same. You might have one slightly larger one in the bigger, okay. bigger sort of kitchen diner spaces. Mm. But nine out of ten of the radiators have stayed pretty much the same size as what they were for gas boiler. So, again, that's another kind of misconception. Yeah. So. Cool. So... There are lots of benefits to air source heat pump, and I think we've already briefly touched on it. Um, the obvious one is being more energy efficient, but probably what our customers will ask us is, can a heat pump save me money? What, again, if a customer asked you that, what would you say? Yeah. Um, it's a diff- difficult one, because obviously energy, in terms of gas and electricity, prices are all, all over the place at the minute. Yeah. So anything that we said today might change you yeah. know, in a couple of weeks' time. As a rule, what we've found based on our initial few test plots that we've done, mm-hmm. they'll work out about the same in terms okay. of running costs. So it shouldn't necessarily cost you much more or any more to run a heat pump versus a gas boiler. So yeah. that, that's kind of the backstop. Um, and, and that also mirrors what we've been told from the manufacturers in terms of their efficiency. So it's mm-hmm. like when you buy a new car mm-hmm. and it says you're going to get 50 miles per gallon, what do you get in real life? What we're finding is we're getting about what we're being told at the minute. Okay. We are doing some more for a scientific test on a site down the road from here. Mm-hmm. Um, and that will involve a year's worth of uh, monitoring of real life customers in a real life Gleason home. Mm-hmm. So we'll find out actually what they're spending across the year. And that will give us a bit more of a, yep. a robust figure. So I guess stay tuned for We'd for love to results, say that so. they were cheaper. But like Adam says, we don't control yeah. The, yeah. the energy prices. So... I think the mo- the most efficient thing is, like Adam said, though you get in an extra two hundred kilowatts of energy. Yeah. F- for nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, just because of the air outside. Yeah. Um, just because of how they work. So a gas yeah. boiler, if you gave that a kilowatt of gas energy, mm. you actually only get about ninety percent back. So right. point nine, you actually lost ten percent. Yeah. So that's ten percent. Your gas bill just goes straight out the window. Mm. And so, I guess maintenance as well. Like, are they cheaper to kind of maintain? Obviously, gas boilers. You always get problems, and you got to get someone out to come and fix them. They, they'll they'll typically work in the same way. So they will have like an annual service. Yeah. Um. So somebody will need to come out and check that it is working. Um. Mm. But there's less disruption, I suppose, for that because they are externally. Yeah. So there's nobody coming in and and making yeah. sure that you know, the house is clean and tidy or you can you can be in your PJs, uh, you know, and they can just go outside and, and, and do what they need to do. Yeah. Um, but there are obviously 
other maintenance things that comes with that you know it is external so it needs to make sure that it's free from any damage so there's no leaves building up around it or there's yeah. nothing blocking it it's it's ventilation yeah um it goes through a defrost cycle as well so there are things that you can expect to see like water mm. obviously coming out of the air source heat pump that is normal yeah. and it's just educating again yeah. our buyers on on how to look after it and maintain it yeah well, speaking of educating, I know you both have been involved with some videos about air source heat pumps. Yes, educate. stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> is there kind of is there anything from those videos that you can? I know we can encourage everyone to watch them as well. But is there any kind of like sound bites that you can think of that from those videos? Would be useful for our, for our listeners to hear. Well, Adam wrote the script, so he can. Uh, and Daisy <laughs> executed it so well. So, um, Both experts then. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess it covers quite a lot in the video, doesn't it? Yes. Talking yeah. about, yeah, the basics, like we talked about just there in terms of how they work, yeah. uh, the benefits, what's different. Yeah. I think it is it is a culture change. Yeah. I think that's going to be one of the biggest barriers or challenges to overcome in the next few years mm-hmm. is just getting people's head around the, around the idea that, you know, if they switch the heating off and leave it off all day, when they turn it back on, it's not going to be immediately boiling hot like yeah. a gas boiler would. That's not how they're designed to work. They're designed to be sort of left on, gradual heating, mm. you know, as well as the heat, we're fitting the heat pumps, we're also increasing the fabric standards. Okay. So the walls are just getting warmer and warmer. They're letting less and less heat out. So yeah. we really shouldn't be any need to be turning it off, turning it on. Mm. We should be able to just leave it and just let it run So how for background would, heat. For our customers then, how would like a typical week if... If, how would a typical week, when would they need to turn it on, let's say, if they wanted, if they knew they were working from home on Wednesday mm-hmm. and they would know they'd want the heating on, when would you then recommend for them to turn it on or what would be the process then for, for that kind of working week? I don't know if that's... I mean, ba- based on sort of my experience and, and, and knowledge of the heat pumps and how they work so far, for best efficiency, if, if I was moving into one of our homes, I'd only ever really switch it off if I was going away for the weekend. Right, okay. If I was going to be away for days at a time, yeah. then I'd be thinking about turning it off. So you just turn it on and then leave it? Yeah, generally speaking, a working week, I'd probably just leave it running. Okay. Because they're not, like we said, they're not losing much heat. Yeah. So there's no point in trying to let it gradually cool down and bump it back up again. It's yeah. The, I mean, we always talk about cars down the motorway. There might be a few car references in this because I'm quite <laughs> into my cars. It, it works in my mind anyway. So if you think about a big petrol thirsty car that's basically your gas boiler and Mm -hmm. if you're on the gas off the gas on the gas off the gas down the motorway all the time yeah you're gonna use a lot more fuel yeah whereas if you've got a little Volkswagen Polo yeah really small little petrol engine and you've just got your foot at the same cruise control at 50 mile an hour Mm -hmm. you know your fuel consumption is gonna be so much lower yeah and that's how they're designed to work if you if you drive that little Polo like the big petrol thirsty SUV or whatever mm-hmm. you're going to get horrendous results out of it okay. so again it's that culture change it's that understanding how they work and yeah. how to get the best out of them no that actually makes sense because when I've just driven down to Cardiff this week and when I started by the time I got back my mileage I think even though I don't know how many miles it is from Sheffield to Cardiff I don't know I'm not even going to pretend that's I that's not know. a question <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'd filled up and I'd got 300 miles by the time I got to Cardiff I think it had only gone down to like 275 or something and it's clearly yeah. longer than that so no that it's makes sense because you used to drive through Sheffield all the time exactly and it's stop start yeah and it's yeah, cruising down the motorway it's completely different yeah. and that's exactly how heat pumps work no that so, makes complete sense yeah. I think another thing to bear in mind as well is obviously building new build homes you know sustainability is massive on our agenda here at Gleason mm-hmm. and as part of a new build property one of one of the benefits is your energy bills typically are lower because yeah. of how they're designed and built to touch on Adam's point there um, that's why an air source heat pump is great for our product yeah. it just slots right into what we're doing um, and I think it is going to be an, an education piece more than anything to our buyers yeah. but I think when you come into our properties and you see how beautiful they are and the quality that we're building yeah. and you get a feel for the fact that they are very much traditional homes yeah. and you're recognising that the radiators are the same and you're recognising the thermostats on the walls are the mm. same and you go outside and you can see your air source heat pump yeah. that's the only difference there that we're really looking at the features and feel and and benefits of the home are exactly the same yeah Um, definitely you're getting more out of it from a sustainable point of view um, and who doesn't want who doesn't want that exactly yeah amazing well i think that rounds off our episode today unless there's anything else that you can think that we've not touched on 
Um, yeah, so I think we have actually mentioned it. Um, we have actually created a video giving more of an explanation as yes. to the benefits and uses of an air source heat pump. And on the video, there is actually a diagram uh, explaining how it actually works. Um, and there's a lot of information there and it's really interesting, yeah. um, which is, is a great tool. So I would encourage all our listeners and colleagues alike um, to yeah. visit our website and take a look at it. Definitely. Yeah, some very high quality acting in, in that video as well. So <laughs> Cheers, pal. Worth checking out. Yeah. And then and from me, I think the only other thing is we're not touched on is, is noise. And that is something that we do get asked about quite a lot. There yeah. seems to be this misconception that they are really loud uh, and really noisy. Yeah. Um, the only thing I can say is in, in, normal, in a normal situation, it's going to be pretty quiet. It's only going to be when it's ramped up. And like we talked about earlier in the video, that shouldn't really ever be happening. Yeah. Even when it is ramped up, the noise is equivalent to that of about an electric toothbrush. Okay. Um, for me, like... A- <laughs> I'm loving all of these <laughs> comparisons. Electric toothbrush, You cars. can tell in my research. For me, a gas boiler does make noise, yeah. and that's in your kitchen. Yeah. Your heat pump makes noise, but it's outside. Yeah. So overall, for me, that's a win. Definitely. Um, and then some people will say, well, if I'm in the garden, I don't want to be listening to the heat pump. Yeah. But my argument is, if it's warm enough to be in the garden then you're probably not calling for much heat in the house. Yeah, So that heat pump is probably going to be sat there silent. And if it is putting out a bit of a cold breeze, you might even enjoy it. Very, very true. Yeah. And if you are sat outside in the rain, why? Yeah. (laughs) Go back inside. There's some some bigger questions there. Come back into your nice, warm, (laughs) energy-efficient Gleason home. Love it. One actually thing I wanted to add, I know I asked the question, but when I've been doing my research for the episode, um, I read or heard somewhere that an air source heat pump is like, a refrigerator in reverse yeah is that correct yeah yes. and how is that correct well <laughs> it's in the, the video the air source <laughs> is made up of four key parts <laughs> teaser of the video yeah teaser of the video <laughs> the, um, on the video it explains all that in yeah. detail um but to adam's mentioned it earlier um it's it's used with a refrigerant which is a liquid and yeah. it basically heats up that's right isn't it mm-hmm. heats up to a certain yep. temperature outside air is very cold it's like the heat differences yeah. the heat that difference, causes it yeah. to to, so, to work in some ways it's quite it's quite passive so it's absorbing if you've got here's another one cold, cold <laughs> but I, i'm very visual yeah. if you've got a cold glass of water in a warm room eventually it'll, it'll heat up won't it it'll reach pretty much the same it temperature be very in the room. hot room yeah, yeah well if you left it long enough yeah. That, yeah that's all heat pumps doing right apart from obviously the energy you put into it is driving that process to occur more frequently yeah. almost so yeah, it'll absorb the heat from the outside air, pushes it through um, it, compressor. a compressor, basically. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, that's the right word. Um, which causes it to get really hot. Yep. Another example would be if you're pumping up a tire, the pump sometimes gets quite hot. Yep. And that's because you're forcing air through a small, small hole kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It gets to a temperature that you can use for your heating, so like 45 degrees inside the house. And then when it goes back outside, it expands again. So the opposite of being compressed, it's expanding. At that point, it gets very, very cold. Mm -hmm. It goes outside, and then that differential between the outside air being warm and the refrigerant being really, really cold, it absorbs the energy. And that just repeats, and that's basically how they work. And the same as a gas boiler, the, the energy, it heats your taps, showers radiators okay yeah so it's doing the exact same thing yeah fab well because we've mentioned it so many times in the episode you've done fab videos where can our customers find the videos to watch them (laughs) (laughs) www.gleasonhounds.co.uk perfect Perfect. amazing well thank you so much for joining it has been fun it has (laughs) thanks izzy thanks adam plenty of bloopers too (laughs) yeah thanks guys Make sure you subscribe to our podcast on Spotify and YouTube so you don't miss an episode. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at gleason.homes and TikTok to see our behind the scenes snippets and maybe bloopers from this episode. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in.